Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. Hey, you're about to watch a recording of the April 2017 Online Trader Summit presented by Metastock. This quarterly event put together by our own Jeff Gibby highlights some of the industry's best traders, and I know you're really going to enjoy it. Hey, if you haven't tried Metastock yet and would like to have an extended three-for-one trial, visit metastock.com slash traders dash summit three-for-one, or just click one of the <laughs> things provided and get your free trial. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Barry, how are you today? We're going to go ahead and un unmute you right now. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, I can, Jeff. Can you hear me as well? Good. Uh, yeah, I can hear you good. Now I'm going to turn the slides over to you. Uh, you should just get a pop-up on your screen. It should say, do you want to share your screen? And Zing Zowie. That I can see worked. him. Yeah. Yay. So you, you are going to talk to us today about the five energies in trading. I am, sir. Yes, the five energies. This is it, the definitive five energies that all markets, um, well, there's actually more than five, but these are the five that I use for trading. And um, I just want to thank you for inviting me on to this uh, amazing event. What a lineup of all stars, um, all the people that uh, you've had on here. I have a huge, huge amount of respect for. And uh, I just got on for the last half of uh, Chuck's presentation, but um, I love Chuck. I've got all of his stuff, by the way. <laughs> he is a superstar, and he's proven that with all of his uh, World Cup winnings. And uh, yeah, he's just, I think, the world of him. So I was happy to be uh, able to see at least the ending of his presentation. And, yeah, he does um, a great job. We are, by the way, getting a lot of good feedback on your stuff lately. Oh, well, that's, that's great. I'm thrilled to hear that, of course. But I'd like to give out, you know, shout outs where they're deserved. And um, and really, everybody here, you, you put together an all-star lineup today. So um, it's amazing that, you know, we're all busy people and you got everybody together on the same day. So that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. Good job, Jeff. And thank you for putting together such an amazing event. Of course. I'm going to get out of your way. Uh, and you are, uh, so like I said earlier, uh, we're starting about seven minutes late. Um, I wouldn't worry so much about your end time because I'm not going to stress about it if I start a little bit late. Okay. Okay. No problem. Um, I think I'll be good, but uh, I appreciate knowing that. In fact, let me pull up the questions module here so that I can see that. Yeah, I can see that as well. All right. Well, very good. Welcome, everyone. And I've got a great uh, presentation for you today. I'm going to be just sharing basically with you my trading methodology. And I've been trading for Wow, this is hard to believe. You see my picture down there. That's uh, a fairly recent picture. I think that's about a year and a half old. That's from a presentation I did in uh, Texas for a very large uh, trading group in Texas about a year and a half ago. And um, believe it or not, I've been trading for 50 years. This year is my 50th anniversary of trading. And I know you look at that picture and you say, but Barry, you don't even look 50 years old. And I have to agree with you. But... <laughs> That's because I work out a lot, I exercise, I eat right, and um, I keep my stress levels low. But uh, the real reason is that my dad, who was a stock trader, he started teaching me when I was eight years old, knee high to a grasshopper. So he was passionate about trading, it was his life, and uh, so it became contagious, and it was a wonderful, wonderful thing that he and I shared all of our lives. He passed away, unfortunately, after trading for 70 years. And um, But anyway, so yeah, I've been doing this for a little while. And I got to tell you, um, having that experience uh, year after year, decade after decade, and seeing the market go through all types of iterations and changes, uh, there's some really big benefits to that. You, um, you know, <laughs> you start to see the same kind of stuff happening over and over and over and you don't get shocked by it anymore. But anyway, yes, today um, we're going to be talking about my five simple steps to getting an undeniable edge in your trading every day. And uh, by the way, also got to give a shout out to Metastock. Metastock was the very first charting software that I ever used. So when I started doing technical analysis, 
Metastock was the very, very first charting platform, and here I am still using it. And uh, so it's my privilege and honor to be still working with Metastock. Also, I got to give a shout out to Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities magazine, and thank you for um, providing support for today's um, presentation, for today's event, for being a sponsor today. And again, I've been a subscriber of their magazine for oh man, I don't even know how many years. Still a subscriber to this day, and in fact, even in my, I always email people every year, encourage them to subscribe, um, not as an affiliate, but just telling them, you know, do it, because I look forward to getting that magazine every single month. I really do. When it comes in the, the mail, it's like a little kid, you know, who ordered a, a toy out of a um, cereal box, and you're just sitting there waiting for it to come every month, and I just, I love the magazine, so, and I'm privileged to have received some Reader's Choice Awards along the way from the magazine, too, which, um, you know, I'm very uh, proud of, and if you voted for me, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I'm also the author of Trend Trading for Dummies, part of the famous dummy series of books by Wiley and Publishing, and I've contributed to some other authors' books. I've spoken to the CME group, obviously do a lot with Metastock. I've spoken to the Eurex Exchange. I do stuff with candlestick charting, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to read my full bio, feel free to go to topdogtrading.com, click on About Me, and you'll see a long, long list there. I don't want to bore you with all that, but I think it's important just to establish credibility that I didn't fall off the um, trading turnip truck last Tuesday. How's that for alliteration? That's pretty good. Didn't fall off the trading turnip truck last Tuesday. Try saying that 10 times. Um, I'm sure you've already seen <laughs> legal disclaimers, but I just feel comfortable putting up another one right before my presentation. So, um, and you've seen this stuff before, but it's really very important. Do not take this lightly. We see it so often that we tend to dismiss it, I think, or become blind to it. But it's really critical that you understand that trading is not suitable for all people. Leverage has is a double-edged sword. Please, in the name of all that is holy, do not trade with funds you cannot afford to lose. Most people do lose money trading. That's the fact, Jack. That's the truth, Ruth. That's the deal, Neil. Um, <laughs> uh, that's the way the markets are. So you're going to have to treat this like a profession and not like a get-rich-quick scheme if you want to be one of the minority that makes money because it is the minority that makes money. So how you become part of the minority is to, well, work harder than everybody else. The devil's in the details quite often. Take it seriously. Give it time. Don't be foolish. Uh, start trading in a simulator or paper trade or demo account before you ever start trading with real money. So, and you see the other list of things there. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do, since we're here live today, this is very cool, and I've um, got a little time. My presentation actually isn't too terribly long. So I'd like to um, get a little uh, back and forth going here so that I can actually customize this presentation for you because each audience is different. So um, yes, I do have obviously pre-rendered slides, but I can fudge that a little bit. I can work around that and um, customize this presentation for you. So if you just answer in the question box there, your answer to this question. What are your most common trading problems, struggles, and frustrations? And if I start, and I'm sure I will see some common themes here, then we'll focus on those so that we can provide some very, very tailored answers and really help you with your trading today. I'd love to be able to really solve some of your trading problems today. Wouldn't that be great if in the next 45 minutes you came away with a, at least one solution to a problem you've been having for a long, long time? Well, that's my goal today is to be able to do that for you. So let's see here. Okay, so we've got, um, I'm going to read off some of these answers here. Oh, hi, Arthur. <laughs> uh, John Michael exits. Okay, so Michael says exits. Stan says immediate retrace after entry. Oh, yeah, I'll help you with that today. I'm a master of that. My specialty my number one specialty is where to enter the market with precision so you don't get stopped out. In other words, buying the final cycle low so you don't buy a A when it goes to an ABC complex read pattern. I'm the master of that, if I must say so myself. So I can definitely help you with that. Timothy, letting losers run. Timothy, you're supposed to let your winners run, not your losers. Yeah, that's a big problem. Okay, we'll talk about that. 
David Protecting Profits, Dan, oh hi Dan, one of my current students here, fantastic, welcome. Uh, Norman Whipsaw Out of Trades, again, can definitely help you with that, that has to do with timing. Uh, I'm very good at timing my entries so that that doesn't happen very often. Uh, Mark getting in and out at the right time, again, timing, that's my specialty. Doug, uh, confidence to enter, stay and exit trades. You know where confidence comes from? Confidence comes from having a trading methodology that actually works. A lot of people, I, I have a um, master's and doctorate in the areas of psychology and people often come to me for that and I tell them, you know, about 20% of you I can help you, 80% of you I can help you too, but your problem is not trading psychology, your pr probably your pr um, problem is you don't have a trading methodology that actually works because the number one solution to trading psychology problems such as confidence is to have a trading method that makes you money. It's amazing how making money solves all kinds of psychological challenges. It really does. So it starts there and then, you know, psychological things, we can help you with that if you need that as well. I'm going to go through these real quick here. We got a lot of um, repetitions. So I'm not going to read all of these, obviously, but uh, so we're getting a lot of people about getting stopped out. Mostly it's entries and exits. Um, Shanghai. Mm, it is frustrating. He says trading for almost two years and not making any money yet. Very frustrating. Okay. Lynn, okay, here's a new one. Finding good trades. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh, you guys have a lot of problems. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, selecting trades. Okay, avoiding the dissel, head faking. Oh my gosh. Okay. Revenge trading, oh, that's a bad one, yeah. So most of them are, Robert, everything you guys said. Wow, okay. Um, okay, David Dale says he's just new, so that's cool. Yeah, this is live, Arthur. Arthur asks if this is live. Yes, it is live, and now you know because I just answered your question. Okay, so anyway, um, a lot of different stuff, but I would say the two primary ones are the primary one that I'm reading here, the one that has the most repetition, is uh, getting stopped out a lot, not finding optimal entries. So, okay, so we'll focus on that. And actually, that really fits in perfectly with my presentation. By the way, I do ask this question. I do a survey of about 50,000 traders every year, just about getting ready to do another one for 2017 now. And uh, from the last survey last year, here are the top five answers that came in. I want to share these with you for a very specific reason. Some of you will get a learning moment from this. So here are the top five reasons that 50,000 traders gave, or those out of the 50,000 who answered, I should say, just to be perfectly accurate. So they'd say, okay, I enter the market, then right after I get in, dang it, I get stopped out. And then right after I get stopped out, the market goes back in the original direction of my trade. So if I can use a little drawing example here, and by the way, my wife is an amazing artist, and I have to warn you, a little uh, warning here, I am a totally unamazing artist, and I'm drawing with a mouse, so that's even worse. I can't even draw with a pencil. But here's the idea, okay? Basically what's happening to them, and I'm pointing this, I'm spending a little extra time on this one, because this is the number one answer you guys gave. So you'll see higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, okay. And you get in and you say, okay, cool. Maybe put your stop down here somewhere. And it comes up, now if you get filled, and then it comes down and stops you out right away. Does that sound, sound familiar? Does that look familiar to anybody? And that happened to you once or twice or a hundred times? Yeah, I can, I can help you avoid that like 95% of the time. Then, but here's the maddening part. Okay, that's bad enough. But then what makes it even more, a uh, couple of people said frustrating, is then the Galdarn market goes back up and goes to the moon, Alice. It's a Jackie Gleason reference for those of you who don't know. So, <laughs> like that little bit of humor and uh, ancient cultural references because I'm ancient. So, back in the days with black and white TV. <laughs> so, when I trained in Chicago, I did two stints at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, worked with a floor trader, just 
you know, backed up a truckload of money, dumped it in his house and said, train me, master. He was like 20 years younger than me. Not maybe that much, but 10 years younger than me. And, um, but he was making millions and so I was like, yeah, it was, it was a lot of money. It was five figures, but it was worth it. So I got to be on the floor of the um, CME back in the days when, you know, all the pits were open and it was active, you know, back in the days of yore. So anyway, he would say to me, he said, Barry, retailers, which is a nice word that floor traders use for losers, and by the way, don't mean to be derogatory by that, not a losing human being, but a person who just literally loses money. He would say, um, retailers are often right, but at the wrong time. And this is the kind of thing that he was referring to. See, a chart is a two-dimensional object, right? And we're technical analysts, or at least I am. Over here we have price. Everybody talks about price. Well, that's great. You should. But not that many people talk about time. And that's what this axis down here, your x-axis is time. And this is 50% of the chart. And if you agree with WD Gann on at least some things, which I do on some things, some things I don't, but he said of the two, time is more important than price. Well, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's definitely equal. It's definitely 50% of the two-dimensional object we call a chart. So the point is here, how do we determine that this was the wrong time? You had direction right, but you had the time wrong. You don't want to enter at that time because you got stopped out. You want to enter it at this time on the chart. Okay, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then I'll, I'll show you how to get more detailed, very, very specific information about that later. Um, today's presentation is more of an overview, so we don't have time to go into all that in detail, but um, that I can definitely help you solve. Okay, and we'll, we'll start solving that today. Now, the others I'll go through a little faster. Getting out of big moves too soon, so not making the huge profits. Again, big, big problem because we have to have a good risk-reward ratio, or I like to say reward-to-risk ratio, and we get sometimes too emotionally excited when we see our P&L go green, and we like to lock in the profits because maybe we had some red trades earlier, and that's just horrible. You cannot do that. You've got to let your winners run. Getting stopped out too often, uh, a lot of you mentioned that one. Not knowing the best place to exit the market. Again, a ton of you mentioned that one. Uh, trading a trend that doesn't follow through, which basically means the way people describe that, I actually talked to some of the people who took the survey because they wanted more details from them. And they would say stuff like this. They would say, um, you know, Barry, I can be watching a trend, and that trend will go on and on and on and on as long as I'm watching it until I get in. And when I get in, that's exactly the time the market turns around and goes down, assuming a long trend. Um, and they say, it's almost like my broker is watching my little $5,000 account and just saying, hey, I'm waiting for Dan, David, Timothy, Stan, Michael, John, Roe, Anthony. Um, who else we got here? Doji? <laughs> Rob, uh, GK, Matthew, Arthur, Richard, Neil. I'm just waiting for them to get in, and then I'm going to trade against them. And they say, that's how uncanny it is. I had one guy tell me, I am a perfectly imperfect trader. It is almost miraculous how perfectly wrong I trade. My accuracy on being wrong is, like, just uncanny. It's a miracle. So <laughs> I've had so many people tell me that. So these are the top five problems that most traders out there have. But one of the reasons I want to share this with you is to encourage you, actually. Look at that list. And by the answers you've already given me, I've already, I already know, and you know, too. These are a lot of the problems you are having as well. What that means, the encouraging part of this is that you're not uniquely bad. You don't have unique problems. Don't think it's just you. It's not just you. It's not your you know, you're not a uniquely horrible trader. You're just dealing with the same stuff everybody deals with. I've dealt with all these things too. I'm sure all the previous presenters have as well. The good news is there's solutions to every single one of these problems and you can solve them, you can come out the other side, and you can start making money if you're not already. And if you are making money, you can make more money by solving these problems. So the answer, the overall answer really, 
is not any one magical indicator or any one magic geometric pattern or ancient Phoenician numerology or you know anything esoteric. The real answer to all these problems and all problems in trading is no one thing. This is why you've probably heard that there's no holy grail in trading, and that's absolutely true. Trading is really about establishing a probability scenario, so it's, it's pretty mathematical. There's never any certainties in trading. As someone once told me, the market can do anything at any time, and that is 100% true. Always keep that in mind. Never get overconfident about anything. This is one of the things that happens when people start making money. They get so excited, they start thinking, oh, I'm God's gift of trading, and they get overconfident, and that's just about the time the market's going to pounce on you and destroy you. You must always have impeccable risk management and impeccable money management. These two things are so critical. If these are two things that professional traders rely on that a lot of amateur traders don't even pay, pay attention to because they're not shiny objects. They're not glorious. They're not you know cool or rad or no, there's nothing new to it. It's the grind. It's the you know it's just what you do, but it's what works. So anyway. Um, here's what I do to establish a probability scenario in trading. I put together what I call a methodology. And I call it that because, well, <laughs> it's methodical. It's, and by methodical, I mean it's rule-based. Uh, for me, for my style of trading, I need a black and white rule-based system. That's how my brain cells work. That's what I need. So it's very methodical. It's very rule-based. It's very orderly. And that way, I really don't have to think too hard. I'm not a discretionary trader. Um, I've known a few people who are, and that's great, but the vast majority of people are not. So here's my methodology. I'm going to outline it for you today and show you some examples. So basically what it's all about is measuring what I call the energies in the market. Now, what do I mean by energies? So let's start there because that's not a term that's commonly used. So at first I was a screen trader, and you know, screen trader just means you're trading off your computer screens, right? And that's probably what most of you are as well, and that's cool, and that's what I am again now. But when I was in Chicago, for my two stints in Chicago, what I learned there, and I was a screen trader before I went there, but what was cool, and I already was making some money when I went there. I had, oh my gosh, very sophisticated trading methodology. It was so impressive. I was so impressed with myself <laughs> at how complicated it was, how sophisticated it was. And I'm like, man, I'm all that. And I actually went to Chicago thinking I was going to, you know, teach somebody something and impress them all. I never got around to showing them what I was doing because I found the guys who were making the most money were doing the simplest things and they were making more money than I was. So I was kind of humbled, kind of humbled. But it was a good thing, it was a good experience. But down on the floor, what you found, well, again, back in those days, um, was there'd be time you'd be down on the floor, and there's huge, 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 huge rooms, right? And you would, uh, sometimes the energy would be real low. And there'd be just people standing around, maybe talking about, you know, the football game yesterday. There'd be some guy flirting with a girl off in the corner. Um, somebody would be sitting there reading something and just kind of quiet. And then uh, other times, whoosh, a rush of energy would come into the room. Everybody would start screaming and yelling and running into the pits and doing all the funny hand signals. And, I mean, literally, physically pushing and shoving. Fist fights have been known to break out. It is just crazy. And the, the sound is deafening. And I started to think to myself, huh, the market is not all these little wiggles and jiggles on my charts. This is the market. This is the market. What's going on here? This is the market. The buying, the selling, the people, the, you know, and there's computers there and all that stuff, but this is the market. And then the charts are actually mapping the energy of what's going on here. And so that's where I came up with the concept of energies and indicators and moving averages, price patterns, all of that are creating maps of the energy of the buying and the selling or the lack thereof. 
So that's what's behind it all. So I said, okay, now, so let's deal with what is and what is now. I'm not that interested in, you know, what happened 40 years ago. Um, 40 years ago, the markets moved very differently, right? Since then, we've had decimalization, we've had the commoditization of the of, uh, direct access trading and low commissions, and high frequency trading, algos, all this stuff. Charts move very differently now. So all I'm interested in when I'm trading is what's going on right now. Now meaning when I'm taking a trade. What's the energy in the market? Now, I break that word energy down into five subsets. So, and I always look at them in this order. And by the way, other than scheduled news, this is all I look at. Now my trading has come full circle back to utter simplicity. So five things, you may want to write these down. Five, it's literally a checklist of five things I check off in my trading. Number one, trend. So for the very first thing I look at before I do anything when I'm looking at a chart is, okay, what's the trend? What's the direction of the market? Because that's the way I want to trade. Whether I'm trading options, futures, stocks, forex, whatever it is, I want to know which side of the market do I want to be on. Now, trend is a little tricky, not too tricky. Most of us know about it, so I'm not going to go into big detail. But trend means not just direction, but it means, and this is Webster's Dictionary. I actually have it memorized. Webster's Dictionary defines trend as the extended general direction of the market. So operative words there, extended and general. Therefore, short-term moves are not trends, by definition. So we want to be accurate based on the etymology of the word, but for trading, for making money, trading in a trend is also important because that gives us a good reward-to-risk ratio. We want to trade the long-term move. So as a lot of you said, okay, solving this problem, we want to trade early in a new trend so that we get a big reward and don't get out too early. So not only trading a trend, but trading early in a new trend. Early in a new trend improves your win-loss ratio, because the earlier you get in, the more likely it is to continue. And number two, it improves your reward to risk ratio because you have more profit ahead of you. And again, defining trend as the long-term move is critical to have a reward to risk ratio. If you're really in early on a new trend, then you can expect a big reward. Okay, so that's numero uno. Will I trade a trend alone? Uh, no way in heck. <laughs> now, why? Because trend is like, let's talk about energies. So trend is like you walking down the street and you're walking north. Okay, how long would it take you to turn around and walk south? Like what, one second? You can do it in one footstep, right? So trend has zero leading properties to it. So it's the direction now, but it has no reliability for the future. So that's a problem, right? So that's why you don't trade trend alone. So then I go to uh, energy number two, uh, numero dos, uh, zwei, duo, uh, du. There you know, I can say the word two in five languages. I'm, I'm pentalingual with the number two. <laughs> okay, enough silly though. So, but this is really important now. I'm going to spend a little extra time on this one, too, because of, again, the way you guys answered the questions before. You have problems with this. So evidently, nobody's taught you this, and this is where you're getting stopped out. Actually, numbers two and three we'll spend a little time on. So momentum is the strength of the trend. You should have a post-it note, get a post-it note at some point, and write down this question and put it on your monitors. Ready? Write down this question. Put it on your monitors where you're trading and look at it before you take every single trade. Here's the question. Is this a strong trend or a weak trend? Very important. Some trends are weak, sometimes trends are strong. If the trend is weak, the trend will end, it will fall, it will fail, you will get stopped out. If it is strong, it will continue. Momentum is a leading indicator. Now, I know that's a bit controversial to say that any indicator is leading, but it's just the physics of the thing. So let's go back to our example. I always explain everything that I say, by the way. I don't, I don't expect you to believe anything that I say. So I, will, I like to give you my reasoning, and then we're all adults here. You decide for yourself whether my logic stands or not. 
So we talked about trend being like you walking north. Okay, and you could turn around and walk south within one footstep. Momentum is not like that. The physics of momentum, um, by the way, let's, let's ask this. Does anybody know the mathematical equation for momentum? Type it into the question box. Let's see if we've got some uh, smart people here. Does anybody know the mathematical equation for momentum? Type it in. And because this is important, you need to know this stuff. See, people know indicators, but they don't know why they work. You've got to understand, okay, I'm using this indicator. Why? Well, because Billy Bob said I should. So, did Billy Bob explain why it works? Billy Bob needs to explain why it works. That's what I'm going to do for you now. Okay, wow, we do have a lot of uh, smart people here. So, very good. So, Sam and Neil and Jeffrey and Lowry and Robert and David and Peter and Robert and James and SK and Zef Zafer. Sorry if I mispronounce names, by the way. Dan, Chris, Arthur, Shanghai, F, James, Jim, D okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, we get it. So, good. A lot of smart people here today. I love it. So, that's right. For those of you who aren't quite sure, momentum is this. And this is just the mathematical equation outside of trading, inside of trading, whatever. It's velocity times mass. Velocity times mass. So, let's take our little uh, illustration here and then we'll bring it back to trading. So, momentum is like a train going down the tracks, going north. And that train has 30 cars behind it. So that's mass, weight. And that train is going 60 miles an hour. That's velocity. So you've got mass times velocity. Now, you can tell the future. Knowing that, knowing there's a train going north, 60 miles an hour with 30 cars behind it, you actually are a prognosticator. Is that the right word? You're a fortune teller or a future teller. You can tell the future. And you don't even need a freaking crystal ball. All you need is math. Every one of you here can tell the future. Let me ask you this. If they put the brakes on of that train going six miles an hour with three cars behind it, will it stop within, well, one human footstep and be able to turn around and go south? No. We all just know that intuitively. Now, I'll give you the details because well, I actually saw this on the Discovery Channel, so I happen to know the details. But they actually use that exact example. A, a locomotive going down the track 60 miles an hour with 30 cars behind it, and they apply the brakes. It'll take it a mile, a mile before it stops. In other words, when they apply the brake, they know the future for the next mile down the track. And that future is, yep, this train's going to keep going a mile, for a mile, north. Now, how do we apply that to trading? All right, let's bring that back to trading. See, everything I do has, like I say, a logic to it. So what that means is if we have a trend uh, that is up, we'll just use uptrends today because that kind of is more intuitive for most people. Okay, and it's a strong trend. If it's a weak trend, um, first of all, let's talk about what that literally means in the markets so that we're very clear here. So in the markets, um, that analogy equates to this. Uh, and again, saw this on the floor, uh, the exchange. So a lot of trades coming through. That's your velocity. Everybody going mental, everybody screaming, yelling, pushing and shoving. Lots of trades coming through, right? That's the velocity. If you have a time and sales window on your uh, charting platform, you'll see the time and sales flying really fast. And other times you see them slow down. So see them going fast. That's your velocity. Now mass is volume. We equate mass to volume in the markets. So we got big orders coming through. We don't just have little retailers coming through, one lots and you know single uh, hands contracts, um, 100 shares. That's retail trading. Okay, eh, don't really care about that. What I want to see, and I don't even care that, well I do care, I mean it's good to see the volume histogram on the bottom of your chart. And that means something, but I like to even um, drill down further than that. And I like to look at the individual orders. So again, you can see this in the time and sales window where it breaks down the size of each order. So you might have a ton of volume coming through, but it's all retail volume. So they're probably going to be wrong. The move will probably be short-lived. On the other hand, if I see, um, let's say you're trading the E-minis, and you see 100 lots coming through. I mean, a single trade, 100 lots. Another trade, 200 lots. Another trade, 300 contracts. Well, okay, we got some whales in there. 
we got some whales. We got the what? Smart money. So that is the mass part of it. That's the weight part of it. So you get a lot of, and you'll see this in the stock market, forks with the banks coming through, whatever. And, you know, the big money, the whales, uh, they, they don't come in with all their size right away because if they did, they know that just pushes the price up too fast. So they do what's called accumulation. It creates a generally a nice sine wave type pattern, a stair step type pattern. And that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. Okay. So when you get that, when you get velocity and mass, when you get momentum in a trend, guess what? It's not going to stop on a dime. It's going to keep going higher. And what I do is once we make the higher high, then I'll lock in a few, I'll lock in some profits here. Move my stop to break even, and now I'm golden. Imagine, if you could do that in every single trade from this day forward, to know whether it's a strong trend or a weak trend, not trade the weak ones, only trade the strong ones. When the market goes up and makes a higher high, you lock in some profits and move your stop to break even. If you did that on every trade, wouldn't you be golden? Would that change your trading a smidge? Yeah, it, it trade it more than a, it change it more than a smidge. And that's what I do. So that's just those are just the first two energies. Now we get to the third energy. <laughs> and this is cycles. And this is another one you guys are having a lot of problems with by your answers. So we'll um, you know that would that would when these these things take a little time to explain. But Basically, it's the same thing we described before. Timing, uh, cycles are your timing of your highs and your lows. When to get it, based on the x-axis that we talked about earlier. When to get out. And, um, you know, I've got another webinar on that, a free webinar too. And um, I'll, I'll be happy to make that available to you guys if you want it. And, and we have the webinar where we spend an hour just going through the cycles. And I show you how to set up my cycle indicator, and all that stuff. It's actually built into Metastock already, which is cool. And uh, but how to trade it is the key. There, just like there's patterns on price bars, there's patterns on indicators, and you want to trade the right patterns on the cycle indicator. Fortunately, Metastock already has the indicator built into it. So if you got Metastock, you're golden, and we can show you how to trade that um, easily. But what that does is you're buying the final low. So you don't get stopped out with like an ABC retrace. You know what those are? Draw this real quick. That's pretty much what we drew before, right? ABC retrace, and then it goes up. ABC, we want to buy C. We don't want to buy A, and it has to do with time. So timing it, getting this, knowing that that's the time that the market's putting in its final cycle low is huge, absolutely huge to know that. So anyway, again. Don't have time to go into all of that right now because this is an overview, but that's what we've got. And I'll make that a webinar available to you guys if you'd like it. No charge. Okay, so let's uh, go through the rest here, four and five, and then we'll show you some charts that illustrate this stuff. Now, uh, energy number four then is price level, support and resistance. So we're looking for the confluence of time and price. This was another one of my favorite things from W.D. Gann, and I'm not a big Gann fan, by the way. Gann fan? Well, that's a happy accident. <laughs> I don't use Gann fans. I don't even use most of what Gann said, but his early stuff actually makes a lot of sense. Later on, he got a little esoteric, and I don't know. It's over my head. It might be great stuff. I don't know. But um, it's beyond me. So, But one of the things I do like that he said was the confluence of time and price, and I use that very much, and this is where it comes in on three and four. And then energy number five, final energy, is really a, um, it's a filter, if you will. So I'm taking my trades based on steps one through four on one time interval. Let's say you're trading a daily chart. Then I look at a different time frame. So if I'm using a daily chart for my setups on one through four, I look at a weekly chart for energy number five. And I call it the fractal energy because it's really the same thing on a different scale. And then I will only take the trade, let's say the ones through four all set up good. Then I still won't take the trade unless it is trading or the trade is in the, or in the direction of the dominant energy of the longer term time frame. So I need both 
time frames moving in the same direction with, wait for it, wait for it, momentum, momentum. The strength, I need strength on both time frames to be up if I'm going to take a long. And what's cool is with Metastock, you can actually scan for this. And you can, you can scan and get all five energies aligned and do a scan for it. And on both time frames, which is cool because a lot of the charting platform, they can't scan multiple time frames. They can only do one. Uh, but Metastock can do both, which is awesome. They've got the best scanner that I've seen. Okay, so now, how do we take this, these five energies? This is evidence. These are five pieces of evidence, and how do we make money with them? So, as I said, trading is all about determining a probability scenario. There's never any certainty, so that's why we use money management, risk management, all that kind of stuff, hedging, stops, blah, blah, blah. So here's how I determine a probability scenario. At each potential entry point where I'm considering getting in, I'm asking myself, how many of those five energies are bullish or bearish. Based on that, I give each setup a score of one to five. I'm literally just scoring each trade setup. Obviously, the higher the score, the higher the probability. And I liken this to taking each trade to court. We need five independent witnesses to establish a preponderance of the evidence. Now, the operative word in this sentence is independent. So don't confuse this with just throwing five indicators on a chart. It's not that simple. You know, Einstein once said, make everything as simple as possible, but no simpler. I love that. I think he was a day trader. Well, no, he probably wasn't. But anyway, <laughs> that phrase can very well be used for trading as well, whether you're day trading, swing trading, whatever. You want to have your method as simple as possible. Why? A couple of reasons. Number one, to keep your mind clear, to avoid information overload to avoid mental overwhelm. Number two, mathematically, quite frankly, you get to a certain point when you add more stuff, you get the law of diminishing returns that kicks in. And then worse than that, not only does it not improve your probabilities that much, it ends up keeping you out of otherwise good trades. So you get fewer trades that you could have made money on. So to me, um, but you can't keep it too simple, right? Because if it's too simple, you don't have enough variables, independent variables, to establish a probability scenario. But they have to be independent. So if I just threw five trend indicators on a chart, sure, I've got five indicators, but I'm really only measuring one, what? Energy, trend. It's like having five speedometers in your car. Really? Uh, why? <laughs> okay, dumb. <laughs> So these five energies that I listed, the key to it and why it works is because each one of these is non-correlated to the other four. All right, so let's look at charts. We'll go through the five energies again and just show you what they look like on charts. And again, I don't use any uh, real sophisticated stuff anymore. It's just all, um, I mean, I just learned in Chicago that you know, these guys were doing stuff so simple and making so much money that it's like, really? I'm trying way too hard here. So for trend, I use the 50 period simple moving average. And it's a very commonly used moving average, which is exactly why I use it for one. Um, the 50, the 200, those are maybe the two most uh, commonly used. But for intermediate trend indicator, um, I like to use the 50 period simple moving average. I actually use both moving averages, but this is my primary one for trend and gives the overall direction of the market. Again, can't trade it alone, it's lagging, but I like to get in early in the direction of that. Now the classic definition of trend um, in some books is higher highs and higher lows, and you know, that plays a role in the market certainly, but it doesn't fit into the dictionary definition of extend in a general direction. So you can get a little higher low, higher high here, but that's really just a complex retrace and an overall downtrend. And that's the beauty of the 50MA, it measures over 50 bars, 50 periods, and so it is measuring a long-term move. So that's energy number one. Now energy number two is momentum. Um, so here's an example. Okay, we've got a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So very practical question. How would we determine at this low that yes, the market will go up and make a higher high, but at this low, 
the market will not go up and make a higher high. Well, there's nothing to indicate that by trend alone. Even the 50 MA, it's still up. So is the trend still up at this point? Well, yeah, that snapshot in time it is. But again, trend is no forward leading indication. So at that snapshot in time, it's true, but we need to add momentum to it. So here's our momentum indicator down here. And as you can see, I'm looking at the lows now, okay? Because that's where I'm looking at entering. So at this low, we see momentum has gone screaming up and it's very strong. Therefore, we'd say, yes, that's a strong trend. Now, at this low, we've got a higher low on price, but look at momentum. I put in a lower low on momentum. You know, a lot of people look for like divergences and highs and everything, and that's fine. But what I'm looking at is, if I'm looking to go long here, I want to see where's momentum at the time I'm getting in. Well, it's making a lower low. So this is what I mean by it's a leading indicator. The brakes on the locomotive have been put on. It still goes up a little bit, but it doesn't make a higher high. My reward to risk ratio is not that great. And again, momentum has come out of the market. This is no longer a strong trend. All right, energy number three. So as we've talked about, um, cycles, time, the time axis down here. So cycles just mean kind of the, the way I think of cycles are the respiration of the market. Markets don't just go straight up or straight down too often. They'll do that sometimes off of dramatic news or rumors or gossip, sure. But normally, with the normal accumulation distribution patterns, they kind of wiggle up and they wiggle down. And so cycles are just the respiration, you know, they get you inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And so we want to use that along with trend and momentum to determine the time to get in. So they're the rhythm of the market. I use a, you can see right here, stochastic oscillator. It is a modified stochastic oscillator on Metastock. Now, so cycles help you to time the market, but again, we can't trade cycles by themselves. I studied under one of the foremost cycle uh, analysts in America, great guy, really nice gentleman, by the way. Very smart, very smart. But, you know, he taught me so much. And um, before I, you know, traded with him, and I did trade with him, actually, as well as um, learn from him, he, um, I mean, before that, I just, the, I knew there was something missing in my trading. And I was getting stopped out too often, more than I liked. And he just really, really shed light on this whole thing that dramatically revolutionized my trading. So I got really into cycles, and I at one point actually got a little too much into them, and I forgot, oh yeah, I still have to consider other things. So for example, here's a cycle high. Okay, that's great. But do I want to short that just because it's a cycle high? And the answer is no. Now there's your cycle low. Okay, because here's the problem. Cycles determine time, but they don't determine range or momentum or strength. See, momentum, the trend is direction. Momentum is how far the market's going to move, how far it will follow through. And cycles are just telling you time. So they don't tell you how far the market's going to move. So from that cycle high to that cycle low, the market hardly went anywhere. So I wouldn't want to trade it. That's why you can't trade cycles by themselves. All right? So you've got to use it with momentum and trend. And by the way, you might say, yeah, but the 50 MA is going down. The trend is down, right? Right. But remember, the trend is your friend until what? Who knows that? Let's do a little quiz here. I haven't asked you guys a question for a long time. I'm sure a lot of you know this. The trend is your friend until uh, what? Who knows the answer to that question? First one who answers it gets a, um, I don't know, invisible Cupid doll from Top Dog Trading. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Okay, so you guys got it all. Yeah. <laughs> the trend is your friend until the end, right? So that's right. So that's why we only trade trends early in a new trend, because the longer it goes, the less likely it is to continue. So that's one of the rules. So if, yeah, the 50MA, the indicator is down, but what do indicators do? 
they do what they promise. They, well, it's kind of self-evident. It's, you know, how they say the answers in the question. They indicate. That's what they do. They indicate. They don't make money. If, we, if they made money, we'd call them what? Money makers. So <laughs> we don't call them money makers. We call them indicators because they indicate. Now, the indication is trend is down except for one problem. You can't look at that alone. You've got to look at how long have we been going down. So therefore, this is the point when I actually start looking for reversals, reversals to trade against the trend. So I'd be looking to go long down here because of the extended uh, move of the trend. So the trend is your friend until the end. At the end, it's no longer your friend, right? Now it's your enemy. Ooh, very important. Okay, so energy number four. Let's, we got just a couple more slides here. We can should make it on time. So energy number four, support resistance. These are your price levels over here. So again, here's the big question. All right, so everybody knows about support resistance. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that. But the question that comes up, the practical question you're trading is, all right, so when price comes into a level, price action comes into a resistance level like this blue line, how do you determine whether it's going to bounce off of that line like it does here or if it's going to break through above that line? Wow, that's a good question, right? Again, with support resistance by itself, you would never know. You can't know. It's only a factor of one, and one variable doesn't give you a probability scenario. So what we ask ourselves is we say, well, is the price action coming into this resistance level on strength, on momentum? or on weakness. If it comes into it with momentum, it'll probably slice right through it and keep going up. If it's coming on weakness, it'll probably go down, it'll probably bounce off. Why? Because there's not a lot of orders coming in. There's not a lot of volume there. And so look what we got here. I don't know if you can see this very well, but our red line there, the momentum line, is making a lower high. Lower high. So that's what we call a momentum shift. Momentum is going down. There's very weak momentum coming into that, and therefore, we do not expect it to break above that resistance level. And finally, energy number five, using multiple time frames. So here I've got a five-minute chart of Apple on the left, 15-minute chart of Apple on the right. So we've got, by the way, the, uh, the um, Metastock plugin for Top Dog Trading also counts your waves. Now, this is not Elliott wave. These are Berry waves. Okay, and berry waves are super cool, so <laughs> if I do say so myself. But they're calculated different than Elliott waves. And um, but this, it will automatically, the cool thing about Metastock is it automatically will plot the waves when you have the plugin and puts them right on there so you don't even have to remember how to do it. So anyway, that's how you determine whether you're early or late into a new trend to answer that question. So wave one, wave two. That is your first cycle high in a new downtrend. So that we define as early in a new trend. That's where wave counting comes in to say, okay, are we early or late in a new trend? So, um, well, let's just look at this example here where we've got the vertical line for now. So we've got a ABC complex retrace, right? That's actually, I'll tell you, I'm gonna give you a little extra tip here, even though we're close to the end, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. Here's something I look at that works great. Okay, a little extra trading tip. So look at these ABC complex retraces in a downtrend, the red line's the 50MA, but look for ones like this, where you get a little triangle. These things are golden, golden, watch for them. Get a historical chart, check them out for yourself. Because what you've got here is you've got trend that's down and you've got another cycle. See, cycles are up down cycles. There's another type of cycle. There's a lot of kinds of cycles. Here's another type of cycle, expansion contraction cycle. It's kind of like a Bollinger Band squeeze, if you're familiar with Bollinger Band squeezes. Well, triangles are kind of like that, in that you're getting, you've got high volatility here. That's a high volatility cycle. Then we go into a low volatility cycle. After a low volatility, volatility cycle, we expect another high volatility cycle. So that's what you're getting here. You're getting two things in one. And, um, wow, so just quick little uh, tip. I trade those things all the time. I love them, love them, love them. 
All right, back to our main point here, though. So if I'm going to trade this, that's very cool. It's still a first retrace in the trend, just a complex retrace. Cycle high, cool. Uh, momentum, by the way, is below zero, so that's cool. But now I look over at my next higher time frame, and what do we got? We got trend down, we got cycle down, we got momentum down. So the energy of fractal, the longer term time frame, it, all the energies are down, meaning that, yes, it confirms the short over here. And I can take that trade. That's a five out of five trade. So one last example. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, on two, early in a new trend. This is a very special pattern here that we trade on the cycle indicator. As I said, trading the cycle indicator, there's patterns that we trade. Momentum's moving back up over here. Um, got support over here. Momentum is up, cycles is up. And we got support of uh, the 50 MA there. One of the awesome things about the Metastock plugin is not only um, does it plot the waves for you, uh, the, the cycle indicator is already created for you, the momentum indicator is created for you. I mean, everything with the plugin, it's all done for you. Um, you know, trend is indicated down here in this bar, wave counts, as I said. But then, oh, and that you can scan. So we've got more than just trend trade scans. We've got triangle scans. We've got trend reversal scans. And they're all built right in with the plugin. You get those. You can do it on multiple time frames. And then you can bring up this commentary. And you can look and put your cursor on any bar. And it'll say, oh, OK, well, dude, we got and it's where this, um, see that little blue dot there? OK, that's where it is. So it says, well, that's a wave nine. See, wave nine is an extended trend. So we're going to look for to go short. The trend is not our friend on wave nine. The, the trend is our enemy. Basic setup, wave, wave nine, blah, blah. And then, so that's your basic setup technically, if you don't remember it. And then here's commentary, what the setup is, how to confirm it on the longer time frame, exactly where to get in, exactly where to place your stop. Where do I place my stop loss? Uh, well, look at the commentary, it tells you, no guesswork. Where are your targets, your profit targets? They're all spelled out there. This is all in the plugin. And it's only available on Metastock. There's no other software that offers this kind of detail on the top dog trading methodology. So um, we'll just summarize here and turn it back to Jeff. All I'm doing is waiting for the alignment of the five energies. And here's my methodology. It is very complicated. It does take a, an entire sentence to explain my <laughs> trading methodology. I'm looking for a trend that is strong momentum, direction, momentum, number two, strength. Number three, cycles at the right time, so you get the final low or the final high and don't get stopped out after you get in. With support or resistance at your back, that's the confluence of time and price. And then we wait for confirmation on the longer time frame and that confirms our trade. It's very robust and adaptable. I use this same five energy method, trading stocks, commodities, options, currencies, and futures. And I use it for investing. I, I manage a pension plan, swing trading, and day trading. And it's simple. It's objective. And I'm pretty sure you guys are smart. You even knew the equation for momentum, so I know you can count to five. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to, you can email me anytime you want, Barry at topdogtrading.com. I love questions from traders, love comments, anything you have to share. Uh, if you disagree with me on something, that's totally cool too. I love to uh, hear other people's opinions because that's how we all learn. But um, I've got this down to a science. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm happy to you know, explain to you anything that you might have a question about. So don't be shy about sending me an email. Um, I love to hear from traders. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's right. I mentioned the free gift. So uh, the free gift is today I've got a free five video correspondence course for you. It's how professional traders trade differently than amateurs. So there's five videos and um, get these little videos. They're just short little quick videos, short little lessons, uh, very easily consumable. And in there I also give you one of my trade setups. So it's not just ideas and theories. I'm actually giving you a trade setup called the rubber band trade. I take it every time it sets up. That's how reliable it is, and um, it's uh, it's good for day trading, swing trading, 
forex futures, stocks, whatever. And so I will type into the, uh, oh, there it is. I'll type my email address into the uh, chat box here first. And then I'm also going to type in this little website. And yeah, some people have asked about the cycle indicator webinar. So all you do to get that invitation to that is just go to this website, topdogtrading.com forward slash free. And um, that way you, you get everything. You sign up for the, um, you sign up for the, uh, what? Well, the course, the video course, and you also then will get an invitation to register for the webinar. Alrighty. So um, that's it. I'm done. Over and out. And I don't know. I mean, I went over five minutes. Uh, Jeff said I could go over a little bit. So I did, but I started a little bit late. So um, Jeff, I'll leave it up to you. If you've got to start doing your presentation right now, that's great. Uh, if I have time for a few questions, I'll be happy to stick around and answer questions. I'll leave it to you. I, I, can you hear me okay, Barry? Yes. All right. I told you you could go three more minutes. So you're good. <laughs> I can go three more months? Okay, great. I'll go <laughs> three more minutes. Okay. No, we're not, we're not hugely pressed. It isn't like we've got like four or five more presenters coming up. So um, we do have a few questions that are coming in. Do you want me to kind of just pick a few? Sure. Okay. Um, do you use ATR for your rubber band trade? No, I do not use ATR. Okay. Is the rubber band trade always done off the daily chart or does it work using any time frame? I already answered this, but I'd like to get your answer too. Yeah, it works on any time interval. You can do it on daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts. You can use it on intraday charts, like five minute, two minute, 60 minute charts. You can use it on tick charts. Um, range bar charts, yeah, volume bars, yep, works on um, pretty much any time interval. Uh, Brad Griffith asked, do you have any options trading strategies for Metastock, or for any option trading strategies? So do you use this with any options yourself? Okay, I don't personally teach option strategies at this point. I do trade options, but my specialty of what I teach is to help people read the chart of the underlying. So if you're an option trader and you're looking to learn option strategies, I'd refer you to you know one of the other people who have spoken today who teach options specifically. How I help option traders is when they already know option strategies, but they maybe need a little help reading the chart of the underlying market that they're trading the option on. And that's very important because, I mean, heck, how can you decide you know which strategy to use, what expiration date, um, you know, just all the different uh, things you need to make decisions about with options, unless you look at the chart of the underlying market. And, you know, that shows you, like I said, direction, how far you expect to go through, timing, uh, you know, all these things are critical before you can make a decision about, okay, which option am I going to trade and which strategy am I going to trade? Steve asks, is this, do you have a trade station version? My question would back, be back as to the Metastock trial. But have you, have you created this for TradeStation? Well, um, you can definitely trade this on TradeStation, but you're missing out on a lot of great stuff. So you don't have the scanning for TradeStation. I mean, TradeStation has a scanner, but I haven't developed scans for TradeStation. Um, you don't get the commentary on TradeStation. So you can definitely trade it on TradeStation, but you're not going to get all of the cool stuff that you get with the uh, Metastock plugin. I'm getting a note that my audio is really weak. Yeah, let me see what we can do about that. Yeah, it's kind of quiet. Let me ask you that. Is it a question? Is that better? Uh, it has an echo now. Oh, now it has an echo. It's sort of Sounds kind of like a cave, yeah. OK, let's try that. It looks like it's the right. It looks like it's the right microphone. There's like three microphones in this room. I like to use the one right here. Oh. I'll just talk louder. How about that? Oh, that actually works. Well, your good <laughs> your good looks up make your good looks make up for your lack of volume. All right, very cool. Well, thank you for your time. Really appreciate your work. Um, like I said, we're getting a lot of really good feedback on this. Uh, I just want to go through pricing with everybody. And uh, Barry, do you have any final thoughts for us? 
Um, uh, you know, I would just say this and finish with this. Gosh, there's so many things that I could say, but for me, what my methodology is all about is always trading in the direction of the dominant energy of the market. And the way I do that is by going through this five-step checklist. So I think as long as you always trade in the dominant direction, or in the direction of the dominant energy, you're good. And I find when I'm working with traders, what I see with a lot of retail traders, and I used to do this myself, is there's something instinctually in, in us that for most people, we're always trying to trade against the direction of the dominant energy. And you know we're always looking at like overbought and oversold signals and all that kind of stuff. And I say, you know, it's better to do just the opposite. In other words, go with the flow. Go with the flow. Hook your wagon onto the professional traders with the big volume and all that kind of stuff. And and to me, that's the bottom line for success. And then the how-to is these five steps that I've outlined for you today. Exactly. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Barry. Have a good. Thanks for spending Saturday afternoon with us. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation, Jeff, and uh, really appreciate it. And again, congratulations. You put together a tremendous event for all of us today, so thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, just to kind of go through the pricing on it, Barry did a really good job showing it. Um, I do like the fact that it does trend, momentum, cycles. It kind of ties everything together for you, and you got that five different judge and jury thing that he's talking about, and it looks beautiful on a chart. Let me just show you how beautiful this looks on a chart. Labels all the ways for you. He showed you that on the chart as well. In addition, you can come in, and of course, we have commentary. I love the commentary feature in Metastack. I always try and design really good, concise commentary that really kind of helps you as you're kind of learning a system to know exactly when to trade. But just to kind of give you an example of how that looks, I'm just going to go back to this buy signal that was uh, initiated after this wave one, this bullish wave one. And so I'm just going to come to the, straight to that day and kind of give you an idea of what, exactly what it's going to tell you. So it says your entry is at 110.09. Here's your initial stop. It's giving you the exact value. In the case of Forex, you do want to sub add the spread into your entry price. Okay. Here's your targets. And uh, one of the things is we wanted to provide a lot of really good information and we actually, there's a lot of information you'll just use while you're learning the signals. You'll notice there's a full analysis of this signal available below. If you click on that, that's actually going to open up a little bit of a browser window. It's going to tell you a lot of additional things that happen to do with that signal, how to read it, how to interpret it, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a great plugin. We get a lot of really, really good feedback, and it's very, very well suited if you want real-time trades. This is something that I would definitely recommend for you. So let me go ahead and kind of go back into the PowerPoint. Okay. Talked about this. Here's the patterns for trading that are kind of built in. These are the things that you can scan for. These have to do with new trends. So this is kind of the list. First retrace after the cross. Free, first retrace after the cross short. First retrace in a trend. Second retrace in a trend. Short and long. For your longer trend patterns, these are also things that you can look for. Reversals in wave seven and nine, so as, as Barry was talking about, as a trend gets more extended, it's going to start to, it has a more likelihood to bend. So this will help you evaluate and find stocks that are going to be kind of in those longer term patterns. Okay. You've got your rubber bands as well, those reversion to the mains, and his triangle patterns as well. Those are all scans that you can use in Metastock. This I already showed you. The scanning works really, really well in Metastock. You just click on the power console. You say, I want to run this scan, and you think, I want to run against the S&P, or I want to run it against the Optionals, or I want to run it against the London. It's just going to, it's really, really simple to use. So in any case, I showed you this as well. And um, so let's kind of go into pricing. It's $4.99. People get really surprised when, you know, this is a one-time cost. You don't pay for this annually. You don't pay for it monthly. You pay for it, and then you own it. Uh, here at the sh summit, we're going to give you $100 off. If you just are interested in this one, it'll be $399. Okay? If you're new to Metastock, I assume a lot of you are new to Metastock. This can include a me access to the Metastock subscription tile. Uh, so you can actually evaluate that platform that's been the Metastock platform. Find out for yourself why it's won every single year since 1994. 
best software in its price category. So if you have questions on this, give us a call 800-882-3040 or you can visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat. I will be running a special class for all of you that signed up today. There's been a lot of you, but it's going to be a boot camp. I'm going to actually show you how to kind of go in and write your scans, how to manipulate your charts. I want this to be a very smooth process for you. And I also want you to keep the platform. So, you know, what's good for you is good for me. So, in any case, here's a list of all of the add-ons that we talked about today. Um, if I had to make a list of the best add-ons for Metastock or my favorite add-ons, this would probably be pretty close to it. You know, we had Steve Bigelow very early this morning, Price Heedley, we had Chuck Hughes just barely, and uh, Barry Burns. All of these are very, very popular add-ons for people that are very, very well established in the marketplace. And they're very cheap. You know, if you get a few trades for 400 bucks, it's not going to take you very long to recoup that investment. If you buy one, you're going to save $100. If you're going to buy two, save $150 on each. You're going to get the two years of stocks and commodities. This question has come up a lot. If you already have a subscription, stocks and commodities will extend that two years out for you, which is really, really cool. And uh, also, it includes Metastock and my boot camp that I'm going to be running at um, in the next couple of weeks. Okay, I need to look at my calendar.